it's incredible how much uh, a lot of people who watch just don't want to listen to what you're about to say and will just be saying the word genocide. And uh, what do you say to that? So <clears throat> Israel and Hamas, wow. It's, it's a very big, very big topic, very big issue that is going on. But right now, the war that is happening since October 7 happened uh, has just brought out the worst in people and has really muddied things. And um, I mean, I, I wake up in the morning and I look at my phone and I open Twitter or X and just see the worst things that are that people are saying out there and, and horrible takes that are totally ahistorical, extremely hateful, pseudoscientific about Jews or Israel or the history mm -hmm. that get 60,000 likes, 80,000 likes. You correct it and you get like a thousand likes or mm -hmm. 5,000 because it doesn't, it's, it doesn't, doesn't matter because people just want to go with what is popular right now. Is that, that right wing American guy, Jackson something? He's one of the biggest, I don't know what his name is. Yeah, Jackson uh, Hinkle. He's yeah. one of those people. Uh, there are some others like Jake Shields. So there's this, Syrian girl and Suleiman Ahmed, he's one of those people. These people have become, they have they have really taken advantage of the current war and have really boosted their their uh, subscribe their follower and subscriber and viewer count and have gone all out there now being uh, pro Palestine and increasingly anti Jewish. It's not just anti Israel; it's anti Jewish. Let's mm -hmm. be let's be honest. It's like um, well, some it, some would say we're just criticizing the actions of the Israeli government. Uh, I will believe it. <laughs> if some people say, oh, you know, we are only, I have nothing against Jews at all. I am only against certain things that Israel is doing. And I am, uh, other than that, if Israel fixes those things and puts them in order and becomes better, then I'm totally in support of mm. the existence of Israel. If, if I see that, yeah, sure, I will, I, will tell, I will say, okay, yeah, you don't seem to be genuinely anti-Jewish. You seem to be, you know, okay with it, just having, you just have genuine problems. The thing is, often, most often, I mean, I, I go online, I interact with people who say, oh, I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm not anti-Jewish, and then it just quickly descends into why do Jews deserve to have their own state? Why do why are Jews having their oh. why is it why are there Jewish elements in there when they're, and, they're from the states, which is a Christian yeah, country? Yeah, and and what, why is um and they aren't even real Jews? They should go back to where they came from, to mm. Poland, and uh, <laughs> and the distortion of the of the history in favor of this pro Palestinian Islamic narrative and all that. It's it, it's just it's it's awful right now it's bizarre uh, isn't it because there's there's actual evidence of i mean you can literally see temples which we know date back thousands of years that are jewish temples in israel and and this idea like oh no they're just people from who had never been to israel and as if that history isn't i mean that history is really complex and nuanced and you know yeah th there are different views of um there are different things that people are saying when they accuse um you know israelis of not being real jews uh, f first off one thing needs to be pointed out which is that uh ashkenazi jews uh those who people say they go back to Poland uh, are not even the majority of Jews in, in Israel at the moment. Uh, so it's it's a very weird thing. But when we keep talking about Ashkenazi Jews, they're not the majority. They were the majority of the of those who um, who established the modern state of Israel, but they're not the majority right now. It's a it's a big mix of uh, of Sephardic Jews, Mizrahi Jews who are from all over the Middle East, including uh, who were in the land in in the in the land which they call Palestine for forever. It's not a white country then. Yeah, it? no. And you have uh, you have Ethiopian Jews, very, very well known, uh, serving in the military. I, I talked to several of them, very nice people, very integrated and all that. It, and um, but what 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 people mean often is that yes, there were Jews there in the land, but those Jews are now the Palestinians because they all converted to Christianity and Islam. And uh, so all the others who come from outside, they're not real Jews, they're fake Jews, mm -hmm. which is just ridiculously ahistorical. We have the scientific evidence, uh, the genetics, we already have uh, established all the ties of the, of the Jewish diaspora back to the land. Ashkenazi Jews have ties to the land, has been established. Uh, there is an ethnic, cultural, ancestral tie that goes back and unites these people once again. Um, and Jews lived in this in, in that land forever. Hebron is one of the one of the cities where Jews uh, 
lived uninterrupted until the 20th century, where, by the way, uh, in 1929, a big pogrom, a massacre took place against Jews of Hebron, and they were forced to flee. Uh, but they were there for forever, not being treated very well under Islamic rule, but they were there. They 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 um, they persisted. Um, now everything is just is just crazy. You have this uh, Palestinian population that whose history doesn't go very far back, who are very mixed people. Many of them came in through the Islamic conquests, uh, mixed in with the local population, and uh, who now claim that they have this, that they are uh, indigenous to this land, and that they have lived there forever, and that this land belongs to them. I don't know if you want to go further into the whole... <laughs> To this well, whole issue, into the whole history of it, but I think that's pretty. I think we co you covered it really well, actually. I think that 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 seems that. I mean, look, ultimately, part of me feels like when there's when people do go on about that, when they go on about nine, the 1948 was it or 49 um, when Israel was established and 48, they, yeah, and they, it's oh gosh, so so. I don't know if there's any other country in the world, firstly, that was formed without some kind of controversy. Right, I mean, every country ever in the world was formed after either killing a bunch of natives, uh, doing even worse things to their women, uh, all sorts of disputes. I mean, look at Pakistan. That's just crazy how countries have, and no other country in the world do pe do people so regularly say it doesn't have a right to exist. Well, it's it's because it's Jews. I mean, um, there there are lots of conflicts right now in the world. There are lots of wars in the world. Uh, a, a lot of there's a lot of chaos in the world. We only talk about this one, this one conflict, all around the world. Whenever something happens there, and it's it's the Israel conflict, the Israel's fight with with the others, and it's because it's it's Jews. And I understand that. Um, look, I grew up as a Muslim in a religious Muslim household. We have established that. The one thing that uh, that is very very significant about that, which I guess kind of maybe influenced my uh, my current activism and my will to support Jewish people and to support Israel, the one thing that was very dominant in this Muslim household was also the the anti-Semitism, the hate for Jews. And I grew up with it. Muslims around the world grew up with it. If you don't believe me, everybody knows about Mehdi Hassan. Nobody knows who I am. Everybody knows who Mehdi Hassan is. <laughs> Mehdi Hassan wrote an article, I think about 10 years ago or so, uh, which he titled something about it, it's something about anti-semitism he was a little bit more reasonable back then yeah and he uh the the whole article is basically he, he says there uh, that anti-semitism is uh common in every muslim household it is at the dinner table and he even says uh every muslim who is you know honest with himself knows exactly what i'm talking about it's everywhere you go home, you sit down for dinner, and everybody at the table is anti-Semitic. Everybody has crazy, crazy uh, anti-Jewish conspiracy theories. I grew up with those. I grew up, when I was a little child, when I was in first grade, um, we went to a religious gathering over the weekend where I was uh, informed that uh, soon a time may come where we will fight the Jews and we will kill, kill the last of them, and they will be hiding behind rocks and trees. And... I was taught about that when I was in first grade. I was a little child, and I went back to school on Monday, telling my best friend about about that, and thinking that it's actually real and it's actually going to happen. And this is not something that just my family or my religious community uh, or people came up with. This is once again something that goes back to none other than Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad himself. According to authentic reports, and Muslims around the world know this because they will mention this when they don't speak in English, or sometimes they will also mention it in English. Muhammad himself made a prophecy, according to the uh, authentic hadith, where he said, um, "The world will not, the hour will not come, will not be established, the last hour, until you fight the Jews, and the Jews will hide behind rocks and trees, and even the rocks and trees will talk and say, Muslim." servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him, except for one tree, the Harqat tree, which is the tree of the Jews, that will that tree will not tell. I know it sounds very ridiculous, talking rocks and trees, but this is... That's religion. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to offend everybody who's listening who's religious, I think half the audience is, uh, and, and I respect their, their beliefs, but they know that in their religious text, they yeah, have talking yeah, tree, yeah. trees and snakes and things, and that's just, that's just how it is, um, and fine. Um,
is and, and 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 look, I agree with you. I mean, look, I go in. I always ask people because that that is something about Jews is that we can pass and sometimes and uh, often in taxis and Ubers and things. If the person driving is uh, apparently Muslim or something, I will often ask their thoughts on Jews and things because I'm just intrigued with when they don't know what I am and it, the stuff they think. I almost feel sorry for them because it's not their fault. They they've been told this stuff and they they really believe it. And if you believe that the Jews, are, it's all like. Eating, eating babies and the blood of this and the blood. They go, you know, I've heard they do that. And, you know, we've got to stop these guys doing it. And I'm sitting there like, wow, this poor guy, like, believes that thing. What can you do about that? And you know the Jewish community. You know what it is to be Jewish. Mm. It, it, doesn't it seem extremely bizarre to speak to people who have these fantasy views about Jews and what Jews are doing and who they are. They're so like, secular, the Jews. They're just like <laughs> secular people, just the ones I know anyway. I'm sure there's all sorts of conspiracies people have got, who are, some people who are watching, but most people are very, are, are very kind and nice. But you, you're just pretending to be secular. In fact, you are secretly trying to... What's that agent? Yeah, yeah <laughs> controlling the world and <laughs> taking exactly. names. I would love to. But look, I've said this before on the podcast, but like that, that myth of like controlling the world kind of thing is so compelling that I feel very much that sometimes I start to think maybe it's true and it would just be typical that I'm the one they just left out and I'm left out and they're all secretly giving each other jobs and I'm not. Well, here's the thing. I, I went to Israel quite recently, uh, a few months ago, and uh, people have been accusing Israel of being kind of racist and discriminating and so on. I have to say that they are a little bit racist and they, mm. they, they, they do discriminate because when I went there, I asked people about uh, you know, controlling the world and how I can be part of it. Nobody told me how to do it. Obviously, it's because I'm not Jewish. Oh, bloody hell. So this is... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you, you, know, you know what, though? The serious point there, <laughs> there probably is like racism in Israel. There probably is bad treatment of certain people and minorities and things, just as there there is in many other countries. And, you know, it's a country. There is everywhere. You, yeah. Everywhere you have that. And I'm sorry, but I grew up in... I, I, I lived in Turkey. I... I'm from the Turkish culture. I haven't seen a, a I haven't seen a culture more racist than Turkish people. Mm. In Turkey, um, ultra nationalism is a thing. Every Turk is is taught to be proud of, of his blood and of proud of being Turkish. And speaking of different people, especially of Armenians and Greeks and others and Jews, uh, mm. even of Arabs, actually, you know, it's it's very funny because most Turkey is a Muslim nation, but uh, often they speak of Arabs very disparagingly. Um, <laughs> We're all just tribes, man. We're yeah, and tribes. The thing is, uh, the things that people in Turkey say when it comes to racism, if the average person in, in Europe heard it, they would probably have a heart attack or something. I don't I know. But <laughs> I, look, I used to live in Argentina, and like they're also they're shocked when they come here. And they're like, wait, you're, you're telling me I can't say this? I can't say that? <laughs> but he is this thing. you know. I'm like, no, you can't say it here. Like, what do you mean? So yeah, just but, man. And then we're told that Britain's like the most racist country. And like on, only someone would say that if they have, if they literally are xenophobic themselves and have some sort of British exceptionalism, you know, like we're so, because they've never been anywhere. They never got out of their house. They don't get out of their pajamas enough, as Douglas Murray says about people. Yeah, like, yeah. You need to get out of your pajamas. Um, quite quickly, is Israel committing genocide? No. Less less quick than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought we were done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, um, definitely not. Most definitely not. And uh, there are many different layers to it. But first off, just because you call it a genocide, it doesn't mean it's a genocide. Uh, you have to establish establish the facts and establish reasons for why you call it a genocide to then uh, to then declare it a genocide. You have to establish genocidal intent. One of the things that is currently going on is with the uh, ICJ, the International Court of Justice. Uh, the, the case that is brought against Israel is that Israel is committing a genocide against the Palestinian people. Uh, what needs to be established there, however, is that Israel actually has genocidal intent. And... Um, what that means is not that Israel caused uh, many Palestinians to die or caused many civilians to die, it happens as part of war. What needs to be established is that Israel was actually uh, deliberately going with genocidal intent, meaning um, aiming for the destruction of this population in part or in whole, uh, systematically, or that uh, Israel was indifferent to preventing a genocide from happening as a result of their means. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think you can. Uh, you can even remotely establish any such facts, and you can 
I, I'm definitely sure that that there is no way that you can actually uh, establish that Israel has a genocidal intent or that they had genocidal intent uh, at this uh, during during this war or at any part of this conflict. Of course, you can go to certain uh, figures within the Israeli government or the public and you say, "Look, they said something that sounds genocidal." Okay, fine, but. Uh, Israel as a state, the IDF as an army, people who are actually in charge, did they intend to commit a genocide? Are they intending to commit a genocide? You can't establish that. It's it's not there. Israel is doing whatever they can to prevent civilian casualties. You have it, I mean, they, they uh, went into Gaza weeks after announcing again and again and again relocate to these regions, go to these regions, drawing maps. I mean, think about this. Israel is actually using their resources to create uh, maps and uh, elaborate you know, paths to relocate civilians. They call them in their homes, say, you must get out, must get out. They say, I won't leave, don't call me anymore. Israel still calls them and tells them you must get out. Mm. Drops flyers, uh, does these uh, knock things uh uh, explosions above certain places to indicate we are going to fight wow. here soon, so leave. If as a result of that, people still stay in their place and then die under the rubble, and it's very hard to uh, to talk about these things because children die, women die, innocent people seemingly die. However, by international law, what is looked at is uh, did Israel do whatever they can to prevent these civilian deaths from happening? Yes, they did put in significant effort. If they did put in significant effort, but if the civilians did not uh, did not abide, did not listen, and caused their own deaths or caused the deaths of their own families, it's not Israel's fault. Yeah, Israel imagine, is waging a war. I think of like the Hutus uh, in Rwanda, the Tutsi and the Hutus. And I remember that film Hotel Rwanda. Just apps, just horrible to watch that film. But yeah, if they'd gone to a village, like instead of going and killing everyone, said, you guys need to leave. Like, we're just looking for the bad guys here. I mean, that film would have had a very different, and that actual yeah. war would have had a different feeling. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember, I mean, Coleman Hughes, I remember saying on Joe Rogan that the civilian death rate is actually significantly lower than that of America in Afghanistan and Iraq. There, there is a thing, um, there is a lot of disinformation going on, but uh, so uh, re recently, um, I'm not going to trust everything directly what uh, what what you know, spokespeople or what the government is saying. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Israel did recently uh, say that, uh, but by their estimations, um, there is almost a one to one combatant to non combatant ratio in of deaths in Gaza. If true, that is extremely impressive. Mm. Uh, Net Netanyahu said uh, we killed 14,000 Hamas members and 16,000 civilians so far, which is very unfortunate, but this is the ratio, he said. If that is true, that is extremely impressive. That means under the circumstances, it would be expected that they would kill significantly more civilians than than uh, militants. Mm. If this is the ratio, this is extremely impressive and shows that Israel is doing their best to minimize civilian casualties. Mm. That said, of course, I can't just take their word as it is. We have to see the numbers, we have to see the results. But even if it is a two to one combatant to, or non-combatant to combatant ratio, that is a, I don't wanna use the word good here, but this is uh, not an extraordinarily bad number. On the contrary, it is quite consistent with the history of wars, especially in fighting in such a place like Gaza that is so densely populated, um, with buildings that are so attached to each other, with Hamas that deliberately, deliberately, in their own words, people don't believe it when Israel says they're using them as human shields, but they openly, uh, they, they go, on, go on TV saying that they do build tunnels under the population to fight, and they are happy to sacrifice martyrs because Palestinians, we are a, ma a nation of martyrs. That's what they say, that's what their leaders say. Under such circumstances, uh, keeping the rate so low is very impressive on Israel's behalf. Uh, and yeah. no, if people say this is a genocide, they, they don't know what they're talking about or they're being dishonest. It's I just, a scary, scary 